Good morning, guys. Um, I am taking, oh, there's Peanut. <laughs> I uh, am taking about a week off of work, which I haven't done since Christmas, I think. And um, I think my body's in shock. I can't remember the last time I slept this much. And the last time I took a week off, uh, it was really bad. And I just had like this really bad depressive episode. But so far this vacation has been really good. So I thought I would just bring you along with me for a little bit of it. I'm gonna have my coffee, practice my Spanish. I need to clean up the kitchen a little bit. And then I thought we could catch up more while I'm doing my makeup and getting ready for the day. So we decided that the first thing we want to do today, possibly the only thing, we'll see, um, there is an animal sanctuary about 10 minutes from here. And I have been looking at animal sanctuaries mostly along the West Coast, but like all across the U.S. I've been researching them a lot because there are some that have these really cool uh, volunteer programs where you can go and stay for like a week. Um, I know I don't need any makeup really, but I don't feel so hot about the way I look right now and it's making me feel lousy. So I'm gonna put a little bit on, starting with SPF. Um, if you need a good sunscreen for your face, this one has not, this is Neutrogena. It has not made me break out yet. And then I have more sunscreen in the car that I'll put on my shoulders and arms. I'm a little bit of a lunatic about this stuff. Um, so this is what I start every morning with before I put on any makeup. And I figured while we were here, we could talk more about what I mentioned earlier about what happened the last time I took time off. So like I said, it was during the holidays, but I actually misspoke. I didn't take a week off. I took two weeks off, which I cannot stress this enough. I never do that. So I just don't take time off, which is not good. Um, so leading up to this week, because my birthday's on the 28th, um, Otto, my husband, he was telling me, Let's take the week off. Let's party. And I was like, okay, we don't party, but sure. And I, I was like dwelling on it for a very long time because, you know, I feel like there's never a good time to take time off work. That shouldn't be what stops you. So not only was the timing not great, which, you know, whatever, the timing is never good. Um, I was having flashbacks to the last time I took time off and how miserable I was and you guys tell me if you've ever been through this I'm always saying I just want to live slowly I want to live intentionally and like live a quiet calm slow life and I say that because time goes by so quite believe you can come ha ah! no come in well you can't hide in there forever <laughs> last time when we took all this time off I thought, okay, here's my chance to live slowly and peacefully, like I'm always talking about. Slow down, get away from work, get away from technology. And that's exactly what I did. And I probably had the worst depressive episode I've had in like, you know, recent times. Um, it was bad. It was really, really, really bad. And then of course, you know, poor Otto, he had to be around that. Um, but... I realized for how nice it sounds to slow down and live more mindfully and intentionally, when I finally took the chance to do just that, I didn't know what to do with myself. And then I've told you guys before that I've gotten to this place where I tie my self-worth to work, to money, to the things that I create and produce, which is wrong. 
So when you stop doing that, even temporarily, you stop feeling that you have any worth as a human, which is so bad. And, you know, I felt like such a hypocrite because for someone who's always preaching, like, you are not your job. I took two weeks off to be something other than my job and absolutely hated it and was so lost those two weeks. So when he started telling me, let's take a week off and, you know, rest and enjoy your birthday. Initially, I said no. Leading up to this, I had, okay, I think I used too much sunscreen. That's okay. Leading up to this, I had told him that I was worried about this vacation turning into, you know, what the last one was. And I'd almost rather keep myself busy with work because even though I'll be stressed out and tired, at least I know how to handle that. Um, whereas the last time I took time off, I didn't know how to handle it. And he said, no, this time we're going to plan activities. And of course, my immediate reaction was not too much. I don't want to be too busy because we're not huge activity people. We get tired very quickly. We're very intro introverted. We're homebodies. So we don't like going out a ton anyway, but also sitting home all day was clearly not the answer. He said, we're going to plan Megan friendly activities and maybe do one small thing a day and just to get out of the house and see something new and, and feel like we're doing something other than just lying around. But anyhow, it's just still confusing to me how someone who's always talking about wanting to slow down, how that last break over the holidays was so bad. I would wake up in the morning and I, and I felt the way I used to feel before I got on antidepressants. I woke up every morning of, of my vacation at the end of a long year where I worked so hard, like everyone. I woke up every morning like, I didn't wanna wake up. I woke up and I thought, great, another day. And logically in my head, I know that that thinking that way is bad and wrong and toxic and it's just gonna make you spiral. But when you are depressed, that is how it works. And you cannot talk yourself out of depression tried it, doesn't work. But I'm happy to report that this vacation is going a lot better. I went to bed last night feeling good, woke up this morning feeling good. And feeling good now, I'm, I'm definitely a little antsy because I feel like I'm supposed to be working. So uh, I mentioned in my last video, I'll drop the link below uh, if you haven't seen it yet, that uh, when Otto went out of town a couple weeks ago, this is the hardest part to do on camera, so I need a mirror. Um, things got really bad for me, like, in terms of my mental health. And it's because I was alone. No distractions, no, my, my, I call him my accountability buddy. You know, he wasn't around. And that's when all the demons come out. It's when things get really quiet. That's probably why I don't do well with vacations. So I had had an appointment with my therapist and she said, you know, it's probably time to bump up your, your dosage of my antidepressants. So, you know, that got me thinking about this whole journey with these pills. If you're considering going on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication or anything like that, I can tell you, I've been on mine. I take, it's, I mean, it's generic, the generic version, but I take Lexapro, which is a very common antidepressant. It's an SSRI, a sel selective, serotonin reuptake inhibitor. I went on this years ago to get me through what I thought was just a really long rough patch. It wasn't a rough patch, that was just my life. I was depressed. I was always scared to start taking a pill to feel normal again, and I always intended for it, intended for it to be temporary. And here we are, I wanna say it's been four or five years that I've been on them. And to be perfectly honest, it still doesn't sit well with me because I'm constantly wondering what the long-term ramifications of this are. My memory is not great, but I think I've talked about that before. I also can't prove that that was the Lexapro. That could just be the fact that I have underslept for a very, very, very long time and my brain is rotting. Who knows? So I don't want to blame the Lexapro. And honestly, even if it was the pills, I can tell you that literally, no exaggeration, these pills saved my life. But, you know, I also learned a lot about antidepressants and if you're considering taking them maybe this will help you too um the first thing i learned is that they are not the ma magic solution for everything they will not fix all your problems 
If you have problems in your life, like a job that's making you miserable, a relationship that's making you miserable, you're still going to have to address those issues. What the pills will help me do, what they do help me do, is clear my head so I'm not so overcome with sadness and exhaustion, like mental exhaustion, that I'm able, like I'm more clear headed so I can better tackle these problems. They don't feel so insurmountable and so huge. Something else you should know if you're considering taking them, and again, I'm just telling you my own personal experience. This is obviously not medical advice. Go talk to a medical professional sharing my experiences. Um, in my experience, uh, the pills, like many things in life, don't work forever. And what I mean by that is five milligrams used to work for me and five milligrams doesn't work anymore. 10 milligrams worked for a really long time and now I'm being bumped up to 15, possibly 20. I'm going to go to 15 because, because that's what I want to do. Um, but when we, like when I first started taking these pills, they worked so well and I did that thing where I was like, well, that's good. That problem is solved. Now I can move on with my life. And it was solved at the moment. But I have to be willing to adjust my approach should it not continue to give me the results that it always gave me. And that's what happened. And that's okay. Something else I learned, and this was such a huge relief. Um, I've heard the horror stories about people going on antidepressants and it makes them, it turns them into a zombie. And I didn't want that to happen because... You know, I mentioned I'm a very, 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 very sensitive person. I like that about me. I've come to look at that as like a superpower. I didn't want to lose that and I was scared I would with the Lexapro. It didn't take that away from me. Again, this was just my experience, but these pills just make me feel normal. I do hope to get off the Lexapro one day. And in fact, over the years, I've tried weaning myself off, always with my doctor. I've tried weaning off of them a few times and I always make it about a month and then I start to slip and go right back to where I was. And she told me, and friends on Lexapro have also told me that the withdrawal from Lexapro is bad. I asked my therapist, is this, is there a way to tell if that's the withdrawal or if it's me slipping back into depression? And she said, there's no way of knowing. You just have to wait and see. So I've tried this. I want to say I've tried three or four times to wean myself off. And I can make it like a week or two feeling bad. And at that point, I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even care if this is temporary. I feel so awful that... I'd rather take the pill. Um, I don't know if that's the right approach or not, but it gets bad enough for me and it gets back to that like scary place where it's just not worth it. I'll still try weaning myself off again later. I did it mm, probably middle of last year, so I'm not ready to try it again. But uh, always do it with your doctor. Don't do it yourself. Uh, you have to take these pills as prescribed. You can't mess around with them they because they can mess you up. That being said, if you take them properly and you have the right medication and the right dosage, they can work wonders for you. I need to get dressed. All right, keeping it cash today. This is it. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the animal sanctuary. Let's play a game called Find Two Matching Socks. to it is a bird sanctuary and one of the reasons among many others that we decided not to go with this venue we immediately nixed it is because in the background 
you constantly hear Kaka! <laughs> okay, let's go! Oh, oh, I'm gonna, sorry, baby. This is gonna be, don't be sorry. I think it's hilarious. Let's go. Do you hear the birds? All right, well, I do. we're not getting married here, so maybe it'll be okay this time. What do they have? Llamas and donkeys. Oh boy. And a mule deer. And a mule deer. Okay, I can confirm as a wedding venue, it's not great. As a sanctuary, I think we're gonna have a good time. I feel like I was put in my place. I'm telling you, you drive here, hold on. This is what it looks like when you pull up to it. And again, there's a wedding venue right there. So we went here a couple years back to check out the wedding venue. But I was not expecting, the, the animal sanctuary goes really far back, or further back than I thought. Mm -hmm. They had pigs, emus, peacocks, every, they had a lot, tons of birds. Lots which, of birds you could hear pulling up, but it was fine. I still don't understand though. Is the, is the sanctuary part of the venue? Like, no. is it like a two for one deal? No, no. I mean, you get the sound of the birds. Just... I feel like you should get a discount because of that. On a scale of one to 10, what do you give the sanctuary? Solid six. Really? Yeah. Oh, you're harsh. I'd say like a seven or eight, but you didn't get to pet them or feed them. Yeah, and it was kind of hot. Well, they can't help that we're in Vegas. <laughs> We are back home and I think the sun and the heat took it out of us. So Otto is watching something on TV and I'm gonna fix lunch. I don't normally spend this much time making lunch. This is definitely a vacation lunch and I like cooking, so I'm taking my time. All right, I think I'm gonna cut it there for today. We're gonna sit down and eat. But uh, thank you for hanging out with me today and I hope you had fun. And Otto is waving. He says thank you and bye for now. And as always, I love hearing from you in the comments. So drop me a note and say hello.